In this lesson, we shall focus on mathematics, M-A-T-H, one for one, calculus, a UKZN module. We shall look at techniques of integration, shall solve a wide range of problems as shown on the board and move forward. Right, Mathematics 1B, um, M-A-T-H, one for one, tutorial three, part two, um, from the 12th to the 16th of August. And we're looking at the integrating trigonometric functions, obtain the integrals of the following functions. And we see how best we can do all these here. And we're getting started. Now let's look at the first question first. Right, so given, for example, the part A here, obtain the integrals, how do we do this? We are able to do this with so much ease as follows. First things first, if you're given the integral of the sine cubed of seven theta, d theta, we simply let u be seven theta. Right, in an attempt to sort of simplify the arising angle. Right, and with this, we're able to know that du is seven, d theta, like so. Meaning at this point, we have that we can write seven cubed, seven theta is u, d theta is du out of seven. d theta is du out of seven. And this is equal to one over seven, the integral of the trigonometric sine cubed of u du, exactly like so. Moving forward, what do we do? We can do this. Okay, so we actually therefore have already the one out of seven, the integral of the sine cubed, right, of the sine cubed u du. In other words, we have the fact that the integral of the sine cubed of seven theta d theta is one over seven the integral of the sine cubed of u du. Precisely like so. Now, what do we do with this? We always, if the, the, the power is odd, the power is an odd number. Three is an odd number. So what we do, and this is the technique, right? What we do is we write um, sine squared u, and then we break it down to the sine u du, precisely like so. And then we are able to move forward. We're able to move forward. And with this, we are able to realize that, you know what? We have the solution. Um, if only we can be in a position to say that this is one out of seven, the integral of. We know from metric that sine squared u, we know from metric that sine squared u from high school plus cosine squared u, this is always one. Simultaneously, this implies that whenever we have the sine squared of u, it is one minus cosine squared. Precisely like so, so that whenever we have the sine squared of u, we can actually be in a position to write it as one minus cosine squared, so that here we have exactly one minus cosine squared. One minus cosine squared u, the sine of u. the sign of u, du. Okay, now what is this? You multiply through by the sign giving us exactly one over seven. The integral, one over seven, the integral of sine u, du minus one over seven, the integral of cosine squared u sine u du, like so. 
Now, what are we able to achieve out of this? Right, we are able to look and tell that we are reaching exactly the final result of this particular problem here as follows. We take a look. This actually then implies that we have here the integral of this, but this is exactly equal to the integral of the cosine u is negative one out of seven, the cosine of u. If you let u to be cosine, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. Let's show a bit more steps here to avoid problems. Let's show a little bit more steps here to avoid problems. Right, we want to av av avoid issues, meaning the integral of the sine cubed of 7 theta. This integral is 1 out of 7. Yeah, the integral of the sine u du minus 1 out of 7. And then what do you have? We have the integral of the cosine squared. U, the sine of u, du. Okay. Right, so... Um, now, this one you can easily integrate, but the problem is here. So we shall let V... Right, we shall actually let V be equal to cosine U. Let V be cosine U. So that the V is minus sine U du. Simultaneously, du becomes dV divided by the trigonometric sign of u, so we're dividing by minus sign u, so that at this point, we know that the integral of the sign is negative cosine, which is negative one out of seven, the integral of the following, or maybe before we do that, let's just do the integration at the same time, so we can just in the meantime, maintain and keep one out of seven, the integral of Sine u du minus one out of seven, the integral of now the cosine squared is the same as v squared. Right, and then you can put here sine u, but what is the du? The du is dv divided by negative sine u. Precisely, like so. The sine cancels out. It does cancel out. Yeah giving us giving us negative or oh, let's keep one over seven still the integral of sine u du now the negative and negative gives us plus one over seven the integral of v squared dv let's find the integral now we're ready to integrate this one we can also integrate this one right the integration would therefore become negative one out of seven cosine u. Now exactly plus one out of seven. What is the integral of v squared? It's one out of three v cubed plus c. And this is actually minus one out of seven. Cosine u, what is u? We remember that u was equal to 7 theta. So you put 7 theta. And then the 7 times 3 is 1 over 21 in the denominator. The v is the cosine. Is the cosine of u, but u is 7 theta. Plus c. And this is the answer. This is exactly the solution. Take a look and reason with us. 
this is exactly the solution to this problem. Take a look and think. Okay, now let's check. Minus one over seven cosine theta, uh, minus one over seven cosine seven theta plus one over 21, the cosine cubed plus C. Let's check. Yeah, it's exactly this one here. It's exactly the solution that was given. It's exactly that one there. Right, and we proceed without wasting much, much time. Um, right. So, move forward. Right. So now we're looking at part B. Now, if you look at part B, we have this integral here. Now, having this integral where you have an odd power, three, you have three, which is odd, but also you have an even power. Even power is four. So now, you need to look at this and reason it out. The question becomes, what exactly needs to be done here to be in a position to to actually be in a position to get the answer so you need to actually have a strategy but a strategy that will allow us to to get the answer with so much ease with so much ease now what exactly do we do exactly at this point and we Take a look. We're going to first, things first, deal with the fact that we have the integral from 0 to pi of 3 cubed 9x. 9x. And then we have the cosine of to the fourth power of 9x dx. We let u to be the same as 9x. du is exactly 9 dx. Like so. Now the best is sometimes you just leave out the limits of integration. Just leave out the limits of integration, perform the integration, and then you can plug, you can put in the limits of integration later on. So that becomes sort of the strategy because you need to just to devote much of your time to really making sure that first we get the correct integration and then we can take the limits of integration there. So now at this point, we then are able to achieve the sine cubed. What is a uh, 9x? It's a uh, u. So you put u. Cosine to the fourth power u. dx is du out of 9. 1 out of 9. Um, so, cosine to the fourth, like so. Right, so now, this is what we have. So, it therefore means that we need to take note of the fact that the integral of the sine cubed of 9x Cosine to the fourth power of 9x dx. This integral is exactly the sine cubed u. And uh, we, we can see that there is a 1 out of 9 here. And then uh, we also have the, the cosine to the fourth power of u. And we have du. That way, it's 1 over 9 multiplied by that. Now, Looking at this, we are actually in a position to do further algebraic manipulations and obviously um, using our techniques of integration here. Now, when the powers are such that there is an odd power, the three is odd, and this four is even, we then can be in a position to see what exactly um, to sort of achieve. So this is the strategy. The strategy is to break down the odd power. So 
We're going to have one ninth the integral of. Look at the odd power. Forget the even. And break it down. And if we do exactly the breaking down, we're going to break it to the sine squared of u. The sine of u. Cosine to the fourth power of u. Du. We're good. We're so, so, so good. And then, now the ball game begins. The ball game starts. So we look at the odd power, only the odd. Forget about the even. Always, if it's sine or cosine, same thing. Just look at the odd. Like, yeah, we look at the odd and we broke it down. So here, you look at the odd and you break it down to, the, to a square. And the other one, obviously, there. Okay. And, and so you continue as follows. Now, what is the next thing that we can achieve here? The next thing to achieve is to then say, what you have, if you have the integral of the one ninth, one ninth, the integral, what is sine squared? One minus cosine squared u. Sine u. Cosine to the fourth power. Du. So now you multiply things out, getting one out of nine, the integral of. The sine of u, cosine to the fourth power of u du. One over nine. The integral of sine u, cosine to the sixth power of u du. Because cosine squared times cosine to the fourth power is cosine to the sixth power. And then the sine is there. And then the sine is there. At this point, you let, let V be equal to, now you, you, tell, you let, it, let it to be the, the highest power. So, which means that you let that be actually the cosine of U. This means that the V is minus sine U DU. But what is DU? du is dv divided by negative the sine of u. Meaning that at this point, we have the following. Right, at this point, we have exactly 1 out of 9. We have precisely 1 out of 9, the integral of the sine of u. What is the cosine? It's v v to the fourth power. What is du? It's dv divided by the negative sine u. Minus one out of nine, the integral of the sine u, v to the sixth power, du is dv divided by the negative sine u. And then now these cancels out. And we have minus 1 out of 9, the integral of v to the fourth power, du minus plus. Okay, negative, negative, it's plus. 1 out of 9, the integral of, the integral of v to the sixth power, dv. Right. With this, we then have the integral. Sine cube 9x, cosine the fourth power 9x, dx. The integral, what is this? Check. Minus 1 over 9. Minus 1 over 9, the integral of v to the fourth power. Plus 1 over 9. 
the integral of v to the sixth power dv. V to the fifth power, one over nine, one out of seven, because it's V to the sixth power, the integral is one out of seven, V to the seventh power, plus C. Minus one out of nine, one out of nine by five is exactly a 45. What is V? We know very well that V is cosine U. So in the place of V, you can put cosine to the fifth power of u. One out of nine by seven. What is nine by seven? Right, nine by seven equals what? 63. So you have 63 here. The V, what is the V? It's cosine u. The V is actually exactly Cosine to the seventh power of u plus c. One out of 45. What is cosine u? Is cosine of what is u? We said let u be 9x so that wherever there is u, we put exactly 9x plus 1 out of 63. And then we have the cosine to the seventh power of 9x plus what? Plus c. Check this out. Check this out. And this becomes precisely the result. Let's check this. The minus 145 cosine the fifth power of 9x plus 163 cosine the seventh power of 9x plus the arbitrary constant of integration c. Oh. We are not done yet because we actually were given these limits of integration. These kinds of integrals are definite. Definite integrals. So this one is a definite integral. These are definite. Yeah, this one is a definite integral. This particular one in B, but yeah, it's different from exactly that one there. So we continue as follows. So we already have got. So now we consider the integral from zero to pi over three, which is actually the same as the sine cubed of nine X, the cosine to the fourth power of nine X. We've already seen it's minus 145. Cosine to the fifth power of nine X. Plus one of sixty-three cosine to the seventh power of nine x. That C we added it because we left the limits out, but now that we are considering the limits, we can we can forget about the C and then take everything from zero to pi over three radians, just like so. Meaning that at this point. Plug in the limits and you have minus one out of 45. The cosine of pi over three to the fifth power. One of 63 cosine to the seventh of pi over three. Okay, with the, with the nine. So that, that's gonna be exactly nine pi over three here. On this one, it's exactly nine pi out of three. Minus, minus one of 45. The cosine of the fifth power of zero plus one of 63, the cosine of the seventh power of zero. which is minus one of 45, cosine to the fifth power of three pi, one out of 63, cosine to the seventh power of three pi, minus. This is what we are able to achieve. So this is minus one of 45 
plus 1 of 63 because cosine 0 is exactly a 1. Right. So allowing us to, the cosine 3 pi is, it's a negative 1. So that we have exactly minus 1 out of 45 with minus 1 to the fifth power, giving us just a negative 1 plus 1 out of 63, negative 1 to the seventh power which is just exactly a negative one, minus. Right, negative one of 45 plus one of 63. Like so. We use our calculator to get the results. The, the calculator, precisely here, Let's launch our calculator and get the result. So we have negative one out of 45. Okay. I had lost it there, my sincerest apologies. Right, so you therefore have a negative one, which you raise to the fifth power plus the uh, one out of 63, which is exactly negative one to the seventh power minus one out of 45 plus one out of 63. One out of 63. Like so. All right, yes, it is a negative. Yeah, it is exactly one out of 45, yeah. It is one out of 45. But uh, now the answer becomes four over 315. We're getting four over 315 if we sort of, um, you know, simplify everything. So we need to check this one, if it is, uh, it is correct or what. The four out of 300. Yeah, four out of 315 is the correct answer. Four out of 315 is the correct answer. Let us check this out and see what we have. Um, what have we got? Exactly what have we got? Okay, we have uh, taken the fact that at this point, how did you get minus one? Because what is cosine 3 pi? What is cosine 3 pi? Cosine 3 pi is negative 1. Yes, please. Yes, I got lost uh, at the part where we got negative 1 over 45. I understand the negative 1 in the bracket, but the negative 1 over 45 cos 5. Okay, let me see. Oh, you're saying where is the negative one of 45 coming from? Yes, the negative part is because I thought it was positive. Okay, 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 let me see. Um, Because we started here. Let's recap very quickly. This is where everything started. This is where everything started. Okay, let's recap quickly. We started with this particular question and we're doing the sine cubed uh, of 9x the cosine the fourth power of uh, of 9x dx and we said let u be 9x and uh, wherever there is 9x we put u 9x we put u but also we're able to see that dx itself from this dx is du out of 9 so now dx becomes du out of 9 so that we have 1 out of 9 like this and then we have the sine cubed of u, the cosine of the fourth power of u. 
Now, as a consequence, this is what we have. But what did we do? We actually broke the, the, the odd power, the sine cubed to sine squared times psi. And then the sine squared, we know very well that sine squared is one minus cosine squared from school. And that allowed us to actually get uh, exactly the sine u cosine to the fourth power. But also when you multiply cosine to the fourth power in cosine squared, it gives us cosine to the sixth power with the sine u. And then now we say let u be the cosine u. So whenever u is cosine u, um, right? Uh, we actually wherever it is cosine, we put we in particular we let we put v wherever it's cosine u, we put v so that we have v to the fourth power, and we put the 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 du because now du becomes uh, dv over minus sine. Okay, and that allowed the cancellation to give us v to the fourth power. Okay, if it's minus one over nine v to the fourth power, we, we get this. Okay, now v to the fourth power is one over five. And this uh, is v to the sixth power is one over seven. But now we have nine times five, which is a 45, cosine to the fifth power. Plus nine by seven is 63, cosine that. Okay. All right. Okay, good. So that the rest, uh, we do the substitutions there. We've already got the, the, the integral there. Okay. And uh, we able, we're able to get the final step. And indeed, the answer is four out of 315, because that is exactly the same answer that, um, you know, your lecturer wrote there. Now, we continue to uh, do further integration. Uh, but this time around, we are doing integration of the following now the question becomes what is the integral of for instance if you are dealing with the sine squared the sine squared of x and then we have the cosine to the fourth power of x right so we need to reason this out but um what exactly can we do at this point Right, what exactly we can do at this point is the following. Part C. Part C with this. We have the integral of 8 sine squared x cosine to the fourth power of x dx. So what do we do here? What we do here is to realize immediately that cos sine squared is the same as one minus cosine squared, x. Obviously the reason is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is usually is always one and that means that um, whenever we have sine squared x, it is one minus cosine squared x. So that whenever the sine squared is one minus cosine squared x. Cosine to the fourth power of x dx. What exactly now do we achieve here? We're able to get the result as follows. We're able to get the results as follows. Now, the, then we actually perform just further distribution at this point. We perform further distribution as follows. So this becomes exactly eight, the integral of cosine to the fourth power of x dx. Eight, the integral of cosine to the sixth power of x dx. Right, so. Um, okay. This is what we got, but now we need to do this integration part by part. It's not really integration by parts that we're gonna do, but uh, we're gonna proceed to do the integrals, um, doing 10 by 10 integration, doing 10 by 10 integration. So we actually therefore continue to tackle 
the following. So now, if we have the cosine to the fourth power, what exactly can we do with this here? Right, so to do this one, we need to break it down. We need to break it down. So how do we break these down, for example? Because you already have, you already have the cosine to the fourth power, right? So whenever you have already, you already have the cosine to the fourth power, how do you actually maneuver that? And we reason that together. So we need to use specific techniques to be in a position to find the integral of the cosine um, to the fourth power in a step-by-step -step fashion. So we do precisely that. So we have the integral of eight, the sine squared of x, cosine to the fourth power of x dx. And this becomes exactly eight. The integral of cosine cubed. The integral of cosine cubed of x. And then this is also cosine x dx minus the integral minus eight, the integral. Right, minus eight, the integral of cosine to the fifth power. Right, so if you have cosine to the fifth power, right, cosine to the fifth power of x, and then we have cosine x dx exactly like this so now the question is what are we able to achieve out of this well we need to do part by part we need to focus on this integral so focusing on the integral focusing on eight so leave everything out and do eight the integral of cosine cubed of x cosine x dx what do we do? Now, this one here, you need to perform integration by parts and integration by parts means what? We need to choose the, the things you can easily integrate and the things you can easily um, uh, differentiate at this point. Um, because uh, whenever you get this part here, We shall therefore be in a position to choose what to integrate. So you're going to let. Okay, by integration by parts, we remember that we actually mean that we're going to use the integral of u dv, uv minus the integral of v du. Um, So that you let so that you let exactly you be cosine cubed x and then dv would be the remaining cosine of x dx mean the integral of this is gonna be u which is cosine cubed and then now if dv is this one then you can integrate you integrate uh, dv you integrate uh, the dv have the integral of cosine x dx which is exactly v the sine of x eight the integral of okay so now let's put out the eight which means that this is going to be u. What is u? It's cosine cubed. V is the sine. 
So of cosine cubed, the sine minus the integral, V, du, what is the integral of V du? Because U is this one, which means that du is going to become what? It's going to become 3, the integral of cosine squared x minus the sine of x dx. So that here you're going to have by the chain rule. So that now we have v, and v is the sign, but du is what? du is 3 cosine squared x, negative the sine of x, dx, like so, which is exactly 8. Um, right, so you distribute here, and so this one is going to be 8 cosine cubed x sine x. Negative times negative gives us a plus 8, the integral. Okay, but it's 8 times 3, and 8 times 3 gives us exactly uh, a 24. 8 times 3 gives us exactly a 24. And then uh, that is 8 times 3, which is 24. Then you have the sine, sine squared x. And this one becomes exactly cosine squared x dx, like so. OK. Now we are in business. We are in business. Now, at this point, you are able to see that you actually have the even powers of this. So what exactly do we achieve out of this? We reason together. So now this becomes exactly a sine squared. Um, cosine squared, and you reason that integral out. And to reason this integral out, we need to do the following. Right, this integral, it's easy. If ever it's sine squared, cosine squared, when the powers are even like this, we can be able to write this one as follows. Right, you can start from the margin. So we have 8 cosine cubed x, the sine of x, 1 out of 24. Which means that we can write this one as what? You can write it as, um, is the sine of x cosine of x squared dx, like so. Okay, we just take out, pull out the, the the square to cover everything. And then we remember from metric from high school that the sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. But now the 2 is missing here. Because the 2 is missing, what we're going to do is so, we're going to... Yes, please. Yes, may I ask, uh, how do you get the 1 over 2, 4? Uh, how did we get the 1 out of 24? Right. So obviously that one must just be exactly simply 24. Well done. It is still just 24. You agree? Right. It is still, it is still this 24 here. It is still this 24. Well done to, to you there. Okay, right. It is still this 24 that has been obtained because it was 8 times 3, which produced the 24 there. Okay, just that I'm already thinking ahead. <laughs> okay, right. Um, Now, but there's some incorporation you need to do because we need to put a 2 here 
Yeah, and, uh, I was already thinking of a reciprocal that needs to be introduced. Right. Um, so now we proceed to then say eight cosine cubed x sine x, which is exactly 24. The reciprocal to be introduced is a one over that to be that to be introduced because there's a two that is missing inside here. So we're going to introduce one out of four. And we shall introduce a two sine x cosine x. So you have dx. Okay, now look. Uh, okay, with the square here. If you square the two, it becomes a four. And the four and the four cancel out. So then we're able to achieve this one. You can write it as it is. The eight cosine cubed x sine x. The 24 divided by 4 becomes exactly a, a 6. Then we have the integral of. Now, this one, what is 2 side x cosine x? This one, what is 2 side x cosine x? It's exactly the same as the sine of 2x. Because sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Then there is, but it is, it is squared. Right, it is exactly sine squared of that, then there is a dx like this. So now we are back. We're going to take this one here. It is actually exactly equal to this one there. So in other words, we can even write here and say this is exactly 8 cosine cubed x sine x plus six. What is the integral of this? For us to integrate a single even power like this, we remember the same thing about uh, the trigonometric sign, but we go back to high school and remember how we actually have been able to do this in terms of the cosine of 2x. It's one minus two sine squared x. So if this is true, what is sine squared? It is exactly cosine, but this angle is double. So if this one is 2x, this one is double that, so this one is going to be 4x. This one is going to be exactly 4x by the double angle formula. So that now, whenever we have sine squared of 2x, is the same as what? From this, we have the following to achieve. We're good. My goodness. Sine squared of 2x, which is cosine 4x minus 1 divided by 2. Just like so, like so, like so, like so. Meaning that whenever we have sine squared, it is cosine 4x minus 1 out of 2 dx, which is exactly 8 cosine cubed x. The sine of x. Now, the 6 divided by 2 is exactly a 3. The integral of cosine 4x minus 1 dx. Just like so. At this point, we already know that 8, the integral of cosine cubed x cosine x dx. Cosine cubed x, cosine x, dx. 8 cosine cubed sine x. 8 cosine cubed x, sine x.
plus 3. Cosine for x minus 1. dx. So what is this? It's 8 cosine cubed x sine x plus 3 <coughs> cosine 4x dx minus 3 um, the integral of the integral of dx meaning giving us 8 cosine cubed x Sine x, what is the cosine of 4? Okay, sometimes we're going to be quick with this, so I don't waste time. The cosine of 4 is always the one quarter is going to come out. So it's going to become 1 over the coefficient of x. But the integral of the cosine becomes the sine. So it becomes 3 out of 4, the sine of 4x. And then this integral of the dx becomes simply x plus the arbitrary constant of integration c. We have just been in a position to obtain 8, the integral of the cosine to the first power of x dx. Just like so. We can use integration by, by parts there. We can use exactly integration, integration by parts. Like that. And obviously, there are a couple of ways to do it. But integration by parts becomes something we can do. But yeah, there are just too many ways to do these particular questions. Let's move on to the next one. Um, the next one is this one. We also have cosine to the sixth power of x dx, which we broke down to um eight cosine to the fifth power, cosine five x. So we need to do that one, the cosine to the sixth power. Okay, so we proceed with that one as follows. Right, so we have the integral. So we can take 8, the integral of cosine to the 6th power of x dx. 8, the integral of cosine to the 5th power of x dx. Okay, y'all. To the fifth power like this, dx. So now, this is what we're able to achieve. This is what we're able to achieve. Let us reason this out together. So now, the question is, how would you do the integral of cosine to the sixth power? So now we must reason this out and then say, if it is cosine to the sixth power, what exactly do we do? What exactly are we able to achieve out of this? Right, so now the couple of things, obviously you need to reason out and uh, one of the techniques you can actually be able to use is using, um, for example, some reduction formulae. So you need to reason this out. You need to reason this out. So now we ponder. We ponder exactly this integral. You need to be very strategic to avoid wasting time because we do not want something that is not going to work but want something that is going to work. So what technique is actually going to help us to do this with so much ease? Okay, each of these is quite a bit heavy in the calculations. Right. So we actually can be in a position to do as we simply please. Right, and also there are so, so many results that can be used. Okay, 
we're pondering this so that we can do, we can use a very, very strategic um, approach in doing this. Right, so let us reason this simply um, together. Because now this one here, okay, yeah, the easiest way would be this one. Right, so now if we're able to break it down, for instance, see there are too many ways. If we can break it down to the following, right? So we can break it down, for instance, to precisely um, the cosine squared. And then you cube it. Dx, you cube it. Dx. Which is A, the integral of. What is uh, exactly the integral of the of the cosine squared? Right, so we're able to see that the integral of the cosine squared becomes what? Right, so the integral of the cosine squared can be written in terms of our double angle to sort of eliminate the square, meaning that cosine 2x it's exactly the same as what? It's exactly the same as 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Right, so that whenever we have cosine squared, you can write it as cosine 2x plus 1, and you divide by 2. And this becomes cosine squared. Right, so, yeah, when I use it, cosine 2x plus 1, out of two, and then you cube it, dx. Right, so we get we get exactly that. And so this one here is going to be exactly the same as now you have uh, this eight here, but there's two cubed, which is eight, is going to give us exactly one out of eight out of eight, the integral. So when you raise this one to the power cube, it's the same as the uh, the following. So it becomes exactly the cosine cubed of double x, three um, cosine squared, two x, plus three cosine of two x, plus one dx. Right, so now we can be able to do most of these integrals, like this one, it's easy. This one you can do, this one you can do. Now, even this one we can do because it is like cosine squared, so it uses the same thing. So whenever there's cosine squared, 2x, this angle it's double. So this one becomes double. So the eight out of eight cancels out giving the integral off. So we're gonna deal with this one. But now we need to deal with also this one. What is the cosine cubed? So the cosine cubed is very, very easy for us, right? So yeah, that becomes a strategy you can use um, all the time. And you know, so this is a strategy you can use even in multiple other instances that uh, you, you will have. Okay, right. So this one you can write as cosine squared of two X. Then you also have the integral of two X dX. This one is plus three, the integral of. What is exactly the cosine squared? Is cosine 4x plus one out of two. Cosine 2x is cosine 4x plus one out of two, dx. Plus three, the integral of cosine 2x dx plus the integral of dx. Okay, so this is equal to, right, so now we come to this. So this one of cosine squared 2x, cosine squared 2x, if it's 2x, this one, this, this one becomes four, but the two in the denominator remains the same. Now, let's look at this one. This one, when you let u 
to be cosine. The derivative of this becomes a sine. So we must use the sine somewhere. So uh, cosine squared, 2x will be 1 minus sine squared, 2x. Uh, OK, with the, with, the, with the cosine 2x. With the cosine 2x. Dx. Now this one becomes exactly three over two. The integral of cosine for x plus one. Dx plus three. The integral of the cosine two x. Dx plus the integral of dx. Okay. Now let us check what we have here. So this one. is the integral of 1 minus sine squared. 1 minus sine squared, 2x. Cosine 2x. The integral of This one plus the uh, three cosine two x dx plus the integral of dx. Right, so what is this? What is this? This you can distribute, getting exactly the integral of cosine 2x dx, and then uh, minus the integral of sine squared of 2x, cosine 2x dx, plus 3 over 2, the integral of cosine 4x plus 1 dx, plus three, the integral of cosine two x, dx plus the integral of dx. Right, we are in business now. Let us perform the rest of the integration. So the integral of the cosine, the two becomes like one half. The integral of cosine is sine two x. Here, if you let u to be the sine, the derivative is cosine. But it's not only that the derivative is going to be cosine, but the derivative is going to be, if you let u to be sine 2x, like this, du is going to become 2 cosine 2x dx. So which means that dx is going to become du over 2 cosine 2x. Right. Yeah, so this cosine is going to cancel, giving us one half. So there's going to be a one half that's going to come out of it. Because the u was the sine, then it becomes exactly um, the sine cubed 2x. Okay, this 2 is going to be the one that's there. So you don't need to show a lot of steps there. And then now there is a 3 over 2. What is the integral of? What is the integral of cosine for x? The integral of cosine for x becomes uh, 1 out of 4 the sine of 4x, and then uh, the integral of the 1 with respect to x is just x. Plus 3, the integral of the cosine 2x becomes 1 half the sine, the sine of 2x, plus x, plus c. 1 half. So which is minus 1 half. So, which is exactly the sine of 4x, 3 over 2x. 3 over 2, the sine of 2x plus x plus c. Right. And 
what exactly is all this thing here? This one is actually the integral of the, this is actually the integral of cosine to the sixth power. Is the integral of cosine to the sixth power of x dx. Right, the integral of cosine to the sixth power. Okay, so we remember, and uh, yeah, we have put eight here. So when we put the eight in front, the eight disappeared by cancellation. So we are back to the question. We are back to the question. So that when you have this integral here of eight So whenever we have the integral of eight sine squared of x cosine to the fourth power of x dx, what is this integral here? This integral, we have seen that it is actually exactly eight, the integral of cosine to the fourth power. Right, it is uh, exactly to the fourth power of x dx minus eight to the sixth power. To the fourth power of x minus, with respect to x, minus eight. Minus eight, the integral of cosine to the sixth power of x dx. Cosine the fourth power. Okay, so y'all, what is this? Dx. Okay. Dx. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, what is this? So we perform the rest of the substitutions because we have already got the rest of these integrals. Like we did the one, the eight. What was the eight? The eight cosine to the fourth power is actually exactly this one here. Let's check it out. So, okay, you take note of this, and these are the sort of things you can sort of apply to learn. Okay, the strategy to learn anything is to start from the tutorials, and then you can go to the textbook, because the textbook is so big. And so by problem starting with the textbook, we're going to take a lot. We're going to take a lot of time before we finish the whole thing. So this one here. becomes exactly what we have. Becomes exactly what we have. The cosine to the fourth power, we did eight of this. And when it did eight of that, what did you achieve? We got exactly eight cosine cubed x sine x plus three out of four the sine of four x minus three x. Now we also have uh, done the cosine, the eight with the cosine, this one. Cosine to the sixth power. Cosine to the sixth power. 
which became exactly one half the sine of two X, but you distribute with the minus. So this one is gonna be exactly plus one half the sine cubed of two X minus three out of eight, the sine of four X minus Okay. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go back to the previous tutorial. So that we have exactly this one, sign for X minus, okay, that's fine. Three out of two, X minus, Three out of two, the sine of double X. The sine of double X minus X plus C. Right, now let's uh, see if we have some like terms. Yes, we have some like terms. So that now with the like terms that we've got, okay, we're gonna go back to the previous tutorial. So that we have eight sine squared x cos under fourth power of x dx is equal to, um, let's see now, um, cos and cube sine x is the only one. So with eight cosine cubed x sine x. Now the sine for x sine for x is this one and this one. So if you have three out of four minus three out of eight, eight divide eight by four, you get a two, you're getting a six minus three. Right, eight by four getting a two, and we have exactly that, which is actually three out of eight. So with this two, it's exactly three out of eight. Four X, so we're done with this one, we're done with this one. Um, right, so we also have to deal with this one minus 3x yeah okay let's deal with the sine 2x but you also have the one half sine cubed 2x which is the only one we done with this one and then the sine 2x has produced the minus half and then it's produced the minus 3 over 2 Okay, so a minus half minus three over two would give us minus four over two, which is a minus two. Minus two, sine two X. So we continue. Right, so that in the end we have minus three X, Minus three over two X minus X minus six X minus three X minus two X. Um, which is exactly minus eight minus eleven X out of two minus 11x out of two, right? So you have exactly minus 11x out of two. We shall get back to that, just checking plus c. 
Okay, so this would be sort of the answer to this particular problem. I understand that obviously I'll go back to the other tutorial, but uh, we're taking a look at this one and making sure that we sort of um, are able to get the required answer is the answer to most certainly the part C. Um, right, most certainly the part C. But yeah, there are different ways, obviously, of uh, being in a position to to get exactly this result here. So take a look and try to most certainly make sense of this. But once again, you see, the thing is, with integration, there are just so many techniques that um, can actually be used to the extent that the answers might look different, yet very, very equivalent. Okay, so now we'll continue to the other tutorial. Let's continue with the other tutorial. Right, continue with the other tutorial. And as, as I said already, you can always be in a position to get different answers to questions. Right, so the other tutorial is exactly this one here that we're looking at. And we've already done some parts of the tutorial. But uh, we actually did number four. Now, for instance, if you look at the tutorial B, um, like question B, because we have already looked at this one by using integration by parts. So using integration by parts, which means it is u dv, which is uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, yeah. You let u. Right, let u be, for instance, 2x squared, so that dv is the same as cosine x dx. So du becomes exactly 4x dx. If in the grid both sides, you get a v, which is exactly um, the integral of the cosine, which is the sine of x dx. So that whenever you have the integral of 2 cosine um, squared cosine x, dx, it is u, which is 2x squared, and the v is that. 2x squared sine x minus the integral of v Okay, good. I'm glad that we have actually done this one. So let us move on to the next one. And then attempt to not to be repetitive. In attempt to not to be repetitive, let us move on to the next one. Right, so we're gonna do, for example, um, the next one, B. So we're gonna do B, and to do B, we're gonna we are focusing on the integral of e to the minus x sine x dx. And so this integral here, we need to choose what it becomes u and what becomes du. In principle, it doesn't really quite appear to matter here. So you can let u be, for example e to the minus x and the v be sine x dx. If you take the integral here, you get v to minus cosine x. dx. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. which is u, v. Right, 
Right, so it is uv, uv minus the integral of v, which is minus cosine x, du minus e to the that dx. So that you have this one. Cosine x plus so plus, which is negative, e to the minus x, cosine x, dx. OK, now we actually have this. And we need to continue and do the same thing. So we're going to have the integral. E to the minus x, the original one. The sine x dx, which is the original one, but we have integrated by parts. And uh, using the u dv formula, and we got minus e to the minus x cosine x minus the integral of e to the power minus x cosine x dx. Meaning at this point, We then are able to achieve something. We're able to achieve exactly something. What exactly is the something? We need to deal with this one. So you, we actually still use integration by parts, but you remember the choices sort of we had so that we, so U was E and the V was the remaining part. So we're going to do the same and let u be e to v be cosine x. du, which is this, the dx, sine x. The integral of cosine is sine x. So right now, when you get to this point, this becomes minus um, e to the minus x cosine x minus. Okay, using this an integration by parts, let's say it's u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Right, so it's going to be u, which is e to the cosine, and the v is going to be sine. So now there's e to the e to the minus x, and therefore, um, this is v, which is the sign, um, the, because v du, v is the sign. So v is the sign, and then du is minus, du is minus e to the minus x dx, just like so. Okay, so this is minus e to the minus that cosine x minus e to the minus x sine x. And then now we have negative, negative plus by negative, negative. The integral of e to the minus x, the sine of x, dx dx. So now we are back. We have this one together with this one. And uh, we are having the following. Um, for this one, it is the integral of e to the minus x sine x dx, which equals minus e to the 
e to the minus x cosine x minus e to the minus x cosine x minus e to the minus x sine x minus e to the minus x sine x dx. So this one and this one, you bring them, this one is negative. If you bring it here, it's going to be positive, giving us two, this, sine x dx, cosine x. Plus C1, arbitrary concept of integration. Divide both left and right by two. Getting exactly the integral of e to the minus x. Sine x dx. Divide by two. e to the minus x cosine x. e to the minus x sine x plus c. Right, so let's check, check, check. So now if you check, this is the answer they wrote. So obvious you can pull out a common factor. The common factor is minus one half e to the minus x, cosine x plus sine x. Plus C. All right. So that's the answer. That's the answer. And that becomes the answer. So we have got this one because the answer obviously is also the same. But it remains to do uh, C. C. Let's do C. In C now, we have the integral of lin x dx. The integral of that, you let u be lin x. <laughs> right, so if u is lin x, Um, because we need to integrate this one, then it means that you can be able to find du. du becomes exactly one over x dx. So that e to the u is x. So that we have the integral of what is dx? dx, according to this, it's x du. Wherever there is dx, x du. What is x? It's e to the u cosine u du so this is what we get this is what we achieve so now e to the u cosine u du so now we need to integrate this one and, and, and the practice is the same. We let u be cosine, for example, b can let u to be e, dv be sine. Sorry. Yes. 
Yes, can you, can you go back? I got the way you got the E to the part view. Sorry. Okay. Um. Right. So because we are looking at the, at the fact that U is lin x, so we let U to be lin x. So when U is lin x, what is the lin? Is the log of x base e. So lin x is the log of x base e. Right. So if lin x is the log of x base e, then you can write e to the u is x by exponentiation. Right. So that's what we got. And then now here, wherever there is, because now cosine u, lin x is u. But what is the x? It's x du. What is x? Now we need to solve for x from this. Um, if u is in x, then we can see that uh, x, x is e to the power u. So that wherever there is in this place of x, you put e to the power u, and this becomes e to the power u uh, cosine u du. Okay, so that we have this. So we have to, this to integrate now and we're using integration by parts, which would have not been possible quite uh, because this one is, it's a challenge. I mean, you can't integrate by parts straight away because even if you make this whole thing du, if you make this u, the derivative of this is, 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 is very, very tricky. Don't imagine. Um, so this becomes sort of the, the way out of it. Okay, but yeah, there are always many ways to integrate, but we know how to integrate the e to the u because that is why normally we do it first and then we can do the, the other transformed versions. Okay, so u, um, right. So now we come here, we let, okay. <laughs> the variables themselves are very, very interesting. So I feel that because now we have u already. Can we use a different variable here? In the place of the u, we use something else so that we can have the u for integration by parts. So that we can have the u for integration by parts. We can have the u for integration by parts. So we, we're going to use the uh, let p, for example, so that the derivative of this one is going to be dp. So dp dx is that. P is in X, P is this, which is e to the P is X. Okay, so this one is dP. So this one is P dP. Okay, I'm trying to resist because we need to um, continue with the integration by parts. So now, if this one is, uh, what is x? x is e to the p. So that you have cosine p, but x is e to the p dp. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I use different variables. So now we come here, we've transformed that integral to e to the p. dp, um, e to the p cosine p dp, right? Cosine p dp. We come to this, we let u be e to the p dv, which is cosine p dp. So therefore, this is the integral of this. E to the p is actually a u. u is e to the p. The cosine of p is equal to what? Anyhow, what I'm saying here, <laughs> it is integration for parts we're doing. So let's first find the u equals e to the p dp. And then uh, this one here, you integrate both sides and you get V is actually the sine of P. Yeah. 
Okay, in the question by parts, u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. u is e to the p, v is that. So it is e to the p, sin p minus the integral of v. v, which is sin p. Um, v du is actually e to the p. You can write it as e to the p. Let's write the, normally we write the e first. So it is the integral of e to the p. And we can see the v, um, e to the p and the v is the, is the sign of p. dp. We do it again. We have e to the p cosine p. Ah, okay, cosine p dp. E to the p sine p minus. It's the same thing. This thing. So now for the integration by parts, we can just move very fast. Once we do it once, then we do it very fast, and then say it's going to be u. It's going to be uv. So the u still remains e to the p. The v is uh, exactly this one. Right. So the v is when you integrate these. So when you integrate sine, you get negative cosine. Integrate sine, you get negative cosine. Minus the integral of v du. V. If you integrate uh, sine, you get negative cosine. That is our v. And the u becomes exactly that. So it's minus e to the p. When, when you integrate the sign, you get negative cosine. dp. E to the p sine p plus e to the p cosine p. Okay, this is plus and then this is plus and then this is negative. Cosine p dp. Right, so we're in business with the integral of e to the p cosine p dp, and this is e to the p sine p, e to the p sine p, plus e to the p cosine p, e to the p cosine p, minus the integral of e to the p cosine p. Minus the integral of e to the p cosine p dp. And then we take this e to the p, and then with this one, it becomes 2 the integral of e to the p cosine of, of this one, e to the p sine p, e to the p cosine p, plus maybe a c1. Divide through by two, and this gives us exactly e to the p cosine p dp equals equals one half e to the p sin p e to the p cosine p plus c. But you need to remember what is our p. In the beginning, we said, let p be this thing here, be the lin uh, of x. We said, let p be the lin of, of x. In other words, wherever there is P, we can put the lin. Right, so that if wherever there is P, we're able to put precisely the lin, then we have exactly the following. So we have the integral of E to there. What is P? 
it is actually lin x cosine of exactly the following. Let me just check what we got here. Let me check what we got here. Check what we got here, what we got here, what we got here. Okay, that's fine. Shall we get that? So, okay, wherever there is P, we just put lin X. So this is cosine lin X. Um, lin X dx. which is exactly cosine x, cosine lin x, excuse. Dx. Okay, what is dp? What exactly is dp? Okay, well, remember that when it said let x, let p be that, so our dp is 1 over x dx. So our dp is 1 over x dx. 1 half e to the power. The p is lin x, the sine of lin x. 1 half e to the lin x, cosine of lin x plus c. Right in the end, what we're able to get is the e to the lin x. What is e to the lin x? e to the lin x is the same as what? It's the same as x, which cancels with this x, giving us cosine lin x dx is equal to. Now we have this. How does it compare to this? Uh, but here, okay, so the e to the lin x, e to the lin x is just x. So this is half x, the sine of lin x. The e to the lin x is just x, giving us half x, the cosine of lin x plus c. So we have uh, half the sine, Right, so you can pull out, you can factor out the, the half x here, getting exactly one half x. And if you pull out the one half x, you are left with the cosine of lin x plus, pull out the one half x, you're left with the cosine of lin x, and then you're left with um, the sine of lin x plus c, like that, which is one half the cosine of lin x, the sine of lin x plus c. So that becomes the answer to the part c of this question. So we review the solution. We we'll recap on the solution and we realize is that what we started with? We started with the, the cosine of lin x, and we let p be lin x, and dp became 1 over x dx. And then also, when, when the p is lin x, p is lin x, we had to make x the subject because um, we wanted to transform this into. Uh, the variable p, so now, which means that lin x is p, okay, and then now we have dx, uh, dx is x dp, dx. So now in the place of uh, um, dx, we have x dp. Right. What is x, x? If P is lin X, then you can make X the subject because uh, P lin X, the same as P equals log X space E. The lin is log X space E, and therefore this becomes uh, E to the P 
e to the power p is x. So in the place of x, you put e to the power p. So this integral here has been transformed into the standard form um, that uh, is actually um, in the uh, at part b, which is e to the p cosine p dp. So which means that we have e to the p cosine p dp is the integral we need to do, but we already know that with that one, we can just let u be that. I would imagine that generally it doesn't really matter the choice here of the u dv. So you spoil for choice anyhow. Meaning that at this point, if you let u to be e to the p, then our dv becomes cosine p uh, dp, which means that now we find the u, which is e to the p dp, and the integral of the cosine p is the, is the sine p, which, is minus, which means the integral of these is actually exactly uv. u is e to the p, the v is sine p, minus the integral of v du. Uh, what is our v? Um, right, our v is the sine p and the du is e to the p. So we have e to the p sine p dp. Uh, now you, you, here you bring down, you bring down e to the p sine p minus the integral. So the e to the p sine p, still you need to use integration by parts again. So we use it twice in the problems like the e to the that, the sine or the cosine of that. Right, so that in this case, now you're going to let u be... You're going to let uh, integration by parts, so you let u to be e to the p, and the v becomes the sign. Now, if the, the, the v becomes the sign, to get the v, the integral of the sign becomes minus cosine, and the this is u, which is e to the p, minus the integral of v du. The v is the integral of the sign, which is minus cosine, and this is what you get. So this is the case. Right, so that you have uh, the negative and negative, which is uh, therefore a plus. So that now you get exactly this. Now then, in the e to the p cosine p, the you know adds up and gives us two, and we have e to the p sine p plus e to the p cosine p plus that, and then you have the two here. You divide both sides by it. Divide by the two, it becomes one half e to the p sine p, but again one half e to the p cosine p, and then yeah, wherever there is p, you put lin x, so that you have lin x here, and then you have lin x there. So that now, in this case, therefore, you get this. Okay, because in the place of the p, you put lin x, because p was lin x. And also, in the place of the of the angle of the p, you put lin x. And then now, dp out of this, dp becomes 1 over x dx, 1 over x dx. So that now, this e to lin x becomes exactly x, and the x cancels, giving us the cosine of lin x dx which is the, exactly one half um, the x, the sine of lin x plus one half e to lin x and that. And therefore now the half x, half x is a common factor, leaving us with cosine lin x plus uh, the sine of lin x, which is exactly the result you're getting. Right, so we have this. And... Let us proceed now and try more problems. Let's proceed now and try even more problems. Right, so let us try problem. Next one. Ah, problem D. This one. Right. And these things are just pretty much the same. Okay. So now this one, you need to let u be the lin. So if in that case, you let u be equal to the lin, the u becomes 1 over x dx. The integral of the square root of e x squared dx. So, in the place of the u, you put lin x. In the place of lin x, you put u. And then what is dx? dx is x du. In the place of dx, it is x du. So, if you integrate... 
What is x? x therefore integrates from the square of e to e. u is lin x. So you have the lin of e, which is 1. The lin of this is 1 half. Right, so it's exactly 1 half to 1. x cancels, giving us exactly 1 half to 1, and then you have e to the power x du. What is x? Now, from this, we're able to see that x becomes e to the u. Right, so this is exactly integral of 1 half to 1, and the x becomes exactly e to the u du. 1 half to 1, e to the minus u um, du. Okay? So we have exactly this one. Meaning that whenever we have the integral of this, the square root of e to e, this one, x squared dx. It is the integral of the following. 1 half to 1. And uh, it is uh, 1 half to 1. e to the minus u. u du. e to the minus u. u du. What is this? This one requires just integration by parts. But you need to obviously just to be careful of the choice you make. The u, hmm, and then you get into trouble if you start with the u and then we use integration by parts because integration by parts deals with the u as well. And now I don't want us to change the integration by parts formula to other variables, so we're going to use p again because we need to use the integration by parts. But the integration by parts has in it, you know, um, u. And we want the u to be kept for the integration by parts. So let's use p. So now we're going to come here and use p. p here. dp be that. So that this implies that um, x is equal to, so this one is e to the p, p. And this one is p like this. And this is dx. dx is x dp. Right, so let's continue. And then we have p here. And then this one is, what is dx? dx is x dp, but the p cancels. You know, there's x squared and then there's x, so it gives us only x there, and then there's dp. And then uh, we get to this, this p. And then in the denominator, what is x? x is e to the p. x is e to the p, dp. So this one is e to the minus p, p, dp. So which is exactly e to the minus p, p, dp like that so whenever we have this with this but now we need to use an integration by parts that is why i went on to use the the thing again so are you to use the p um and so now we need to let u u must just be p okay because we want the derivative of one the p to disappear the only way for the p to disappear is when we make it u so that we can differentiate it and the derivative of the p becomes one simplifying everything Everything else becomes dv, which is minus e to the p dp. 
du becomes exactly dp because the derivative is one. Here you integrate both left and right, the integral to v becomes exactly v. This one is going to just be minus e to the p dp. Like that. So that what you're getting here by integration by parts, the integration by parts formula is that u dv equals uv minus the integral v du. u, p, v is this one. So it's, this is uv, it's minus p e to the minus p dp minus the integral of v. minus the integral of v, and v is this one, and then du, which is dp. So it's minus e to the that, dp, and the, yeah, it's, it's, it's v, the integral of, 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 of du, and then the du is dp. It's dp, this way. So, what you then get going to get is that this one is going to be exactly from one half to one. And then this one, the integral of this one is going to be one half to one. You're giving us the negative P. Uh-huh. Okay. So, okay. This one is, there's no DP here, please. It's just UV. Okay, and the V, please, does not have a dp, anyone? Okay, the integral of this becomes that, yeah, the V does not have a dp, I saw where that was coming from. So now we good. What do we have here? You know, just, uh, yeah, I need to bring this closer. Bring this closer to this one. One half to one. Okay, when you get to this point, then you have this, and then it is exactly one half to one minus, yeah. Then this is one plus. Negative by negative is plus. But the integral of e to the minus p becomes minus, becomes minus. Well, because in general, the integral of e to the ax dx it's 1 over a e to the a x plus c. So that uh, you have exactly this plus. And then the integral of this one is minus e to the minus p, the integral of 1 half to 1. So that now you substitute everything, which is exactly that e to the minus 1 minus one half e to the minus one half. And therefore this is minus the integral of e to the minus one, minus e to the minus one half. So now let us simplify this. Minus one over e plus one half Okay, yeah, let us add uh, some like terms here. What exactly are the like terms here? So we already already have got we we already have we already have got the integral of this one. The square root of e e lin x divided by x squared dx is equal to Okay, it's equal to this one, which is minus exactly that. So we're going to take this one and then we're going to simplify on the other side and then see what answer we're going to achieve. So what you're going to get is the following. Let's check. So what we're able to see here Yes, yeah, almost and see. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. This is our last. Because I know that you need to move. So now we have already got we have already got a, this one. So we carry these things forward and then you write them down, which is minus one in the E and everything. So it's minus. Um, e to the minus one. So what's the one times we saw? Minus one half. E to the minus one half. Minus e to the minus one. Minus e to the minus one half. So that we have these together with this, which is minus two e to the minus one, and then we have these. You have minus one half plus negative by negative, it's plus. So in other words, you have one minus one half, which is exactly one half e to that. And then what then you are getting here becomes the following, right? So this you can write as minus two over e plus. Okay, let's check. Yeah, there are sign there are sign issues here. This and that would be minus two, but this one it's gonna exactly be a plus. Okay, so this one is gonna exactly be a plus, which is gonna be a plus half, and this one is exactly a one, which is exactly three out of two. And this is actually exactly three out of two, the square root of e which is exactly this here. So we, we have been able to do the part D. Okay, we're just in the, in the, uh, discussing integration by parts. What you need to do, recap on this one, revise them, and then we shall meet again later on today to continue more. I'll see what to do. Um, we have uh, also the, task, the other tasks to do. I'm gonna look at the task, uh, at the dates for the tests, the tests that are coming, but also um, we don't need to forget the one for two module as well. Um, so yeah, it's something we need to balance up. I'm going to look at the test for both the test dates and then we actually can strategize. Right, I'm going to make the recording available in the next couple of minutes. Right, it was awesome, awesome having this discussion um, now.